and I don't know why, and I don't know how. Yeah, I never meant to love you, but it's too late now. I never took myself for a family man. Yeah, now I'm running to the bedroom every chance I can. You draw the shades, let your head down, you pull me in. Well, I can feel blood rushing just below your skin. I said I'll always be a prisoner, I'll always be your slave. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Hope everyone is having a fantastic morning. 8.33, three minutes late because, I don't know, the program just died on me. I set up the whole thing. I set up all the graphics. I set up all the outputs. We were on Periscope, and then the whole thing crashed. So we'll try again. Anyway. We got Abe here, Troy's here, Norm Shaver, Dags, Max Coza, Slurp Bob on Periscope. We got, uh, oh, Llewellyn. Good morning, Llewellyn. Hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, Someone from the, Kyle from the nation's capital. Hope everyone's doing well. It's a weird week. uh, Because it feels almost like it should be Friday, but also it feels like it should be Monday. So I have no, I just have zero idea where we're at in the week. But it's Wednesday. It's the middle of the day, week. I know that for sure because I checked before I did this. Uh, talking, do, whoa, hit the wrong button. Oh, forgot to set that up. So anyway, we got uh, we got some stuff coming out on John Boy Media channels today. We've got talking baseball, which man, whirlwind of an episode. I'm sure a lot of you uh, that that follow me and found me, you know, uh, stem from a baseball past and all that. But just uh, only day one of negotiations, so I'm not going to get too down. That's kind of what I talked about. But we would, we talked all the way through, and Trev has a lot of players sending him their thoughts. So we got we did some tidbits, what players are thinking about this proposal and our whole the game that the owners are playing and and all that stuff. So go check out Talking Baseball. John Boy Jake Radio coming up at ten o'clock. If you switch over to the other channel, you can watch live as we record that. Watching baseball, I believe is a two thousand and it, we're still doing tiebreaker games, but I got to tell you, the the Twins were in back-to-back tiebreaker games, and both of them were so fun. I, I enjoyed watching it so much. 2009, the last game, the last game at the uh, uh, Twins. Metrodome? I don't know why I'm blanking, but anyway, so that's what's coming out. And then talking sports, Keith McPherson did a solo pod in response to Jake and Bobby doing a show. I uh, just got the message that that dropped today. So that's everything that's coming out on the network today. We have a huge d- day recording-wise. We're doing this, John Boy Jake Radio at 10. Then we have an interview for Talking Yanks. We have an interview for Talking Baseball, and we have a big company uh, meeting. So big day today on the recording front, but even bigger day in Kitts Hummock, Delaware. It's 61 degrees and cloudy. Just slate. Kitts Hummock. Kitts Hummock, Delaware. It's a coastal town. I like Google mapped it. I think there's like 12 houses in the whole area. It's on the Delaware Bay. So it's not even an ocean coastal town. So shots fired. That blows. It was originally named Kids Hammock. It was originally named Kids Hammock. And then somehow they butchered it to Kitts Hummock, <laughs> which you can hear the natural progression. It was named after Captain William Kidd, who should have gone by Billy the Kid because his name was literally Billy Kid, but he's not Billy the Kid. That's another person in history. This is Captain William Kidd, famous pirate. People still look for his treasure. Some dudes in 2005 got arrested for going to some island outside of Guam or something like that to dig up his treasure. Someone did find treasure, but it was back when he was still alive. And uh, so he was dropping treasure places. Maybe that's why these pirate, these treasure chasers are still trying to track down Captain William Kidd's treasure. But anyway, supposedly he dropped treasure in the Delaware Bay on this area, this grassy 
area called a hammock. So they called it Kids Hammock, and now it's called Kids Hummock, and it's a little tiny town in Delaware, and it's 60 degrees today, and uh, 61 degrees, my bad, and, and cloudy. So to the 12 people that live there, enjoy that weather, I guess. Random baseball player to, of the day today is Juan. Now, I might say this wrong. Eichelberger? I think it's Eichelberger, which is a crazy name. Uh, it's kind of a fun name. No, I don't want to do that. Computer program. Stop trying to make me do that. Juan Eichelberger. I was diving around this dude's baseball reference for so long. Abe. Abe in the chat said, Billy the Kid covered in Last from the Past. Yes, we did a whole episode on Billy the Kid on Last from the Past. Um, so, Kit's Hummock, Kid's Hammock, Weather, Juan Eichelberger is our player. And Juan Eichelberger, I found two stories about him that I really liked. And if you, if you follow baseball, you know the Padres are the last team that don't have a no-hitter. Don't have a no-hitter. Well, Juan Eichelberger in 1982 has a very controversial... One hitter. That's what I found. Check this out. Um, Eichelberger loses no hitter on controversial scoring call. This is a newspaper from back in the day. And I'll just read it real quick. The San Diego Padres right-hander thought he had pitched a no hitter Wednesday in beating the Chicago Cubs 3-1. to one. He was denied one by an official scorer's call that gave a controversial hit to Scott Thompson in the second inning. So it's pretty early on to change the course of the whole game, but maybe he didn't know what the, no, he did. So anyway, Eichelberger insisted that the call should have been an error on second baseman, Tim Flannery. So shots fired at a second baseman, basically saying that dude should have made the play. He didn't make the play. He's a chump bitch. Should have been a no hitter. The visiting team in baseball always gets the short end of the stick from the official scorer, said Eichelberger. If San Diego had been the home team, it would have been ruled an error and it would have been the end of it. So naturally you're thinking, oh shit, what's Tim Flannery think about all this? Does he concede that it was an error? And then I, and that goes on to say, Eichelberg's teammates, including Flannery, also felt the official scorer, Dave Nightingale of the Sporting News, is that Bob's dad? Okay, quick. Dave Nightingale... Is that Bob's dad? Dave, Bob, uh, da, da, da. Tried to Google it and it didn't come up within the first three things, so I'm over it. So anyway, where was I? Official score, David Nightingale of the Sporting News made the mistake in not calling Thompson's hit an error. No way was that a hit, said Padres shortstop Gary Templeton. Added manager Dick Williams, Dick Willie, I don't know how a four-hop weekly hit ground ball that bounced off of Flannery's glove could in any way be construed as anything but an error. Error. Flannery, the second baseman, said the call was absurd because the ball was hit slowly to my left and I immediately called the first baseman off since I knew it was going to be an easy play. The ball hit the pocket of my glove, ran up my arm and over my shoulder, and when I saw the H sign flash on the scoreboard, I couldn't believe my eyes. If I had played in Chicago, I'd be a 400 hitter. So shots fired all across the board at David Nightingale and the Cubs. Chicago manager Lee Alia, Alia? thought that the Padres had no right to complain. He said the official score had given the San Diego the benefit of the doubt Later in the game. So, man, controversy. Do the Padres actually have a no-hitter? No. Because official score means official score. But, interesting tidbit. Interesting tidbit. I found another story about this dude that I really liked. And it is that... Um, hey, great mustache. Someone's in the, someone in the chat said, great mustache on... Uh, Juan Ike. I think he went by Ike. I know that because of this next story. So listen to this next story I found on Juan Ike. It was a 1982 game, and they were in San Francisco, which is where Ike's from, and he's pitching a gem of a game. 
And after the game, the manager, Dick Williams, says, I don't play that way very often, but Ike had all those people in the stands. So what was he talking about? Well, Ike was pitching such a damn good game, but I think it was a one-run game. And uh, in the seventh inning, no, it was a tie game. What Williams did was let pitcher Juan Eichelberger bat against San Francisco with two out and a runner on third and the score tied in the seventh. Tie game, go ahead, run on third base and two outs and the pitcher's up. But Ike had 106 relatives in the stands because he's from San Francisco. So he went up to his manager, Dick Williams, and was like, yo, let me hit. I got a lot of fans here that want to see me hit. I got to put on a show for him. And they had a pinch hitter, Rupert Jones, who was a 309 hitter at the time, ready to go. But Dick Williams was like, okay, Ike's got all the people in the stands. We'll let him go up. And what does Ike do? He doubles. Padres take the lead. They go on to win. Boom. That's pretty badass. Hey, I got 106 people came here. They didn't just come to watch me pitch, Dick. Came to watch me hit, too. So why don't you just let me go up there and do the damn thing? And he did, which is, uh, I think I, I have it. Like, I don't think he was a good hitter at all. Let me see. What's going on? What's going? Here's his uh, numbers. That's pitching. Where's hitting? Standard batting. Yeah, he only had 14 career hits. So pretty, he only had two, he only had two career doubles. And one came from that. So, badass. Juan Eichelberger. And that's all I have to say about that. Book of the day. You guys don't even know, know how excited I am. Usually, I had boxes of books on the floor and the windowsill and just stacked up. But wonderful girlfriend, Caitlin, yesterday, uh, built a bookshelf. And I can't really show it to you. But now there's a bookshelf right there. If I spun my computer, I think you'd see it. I don't know if that's worth it, though. Quick spin. There's a second bedroom. Quick spin. Yeah, so there's a bookshelf over there now. And there you go. And I just played the Forrest Gump bit. And this book by uh, Jersey Kaczynski, is it Jersey? Is basically uh, a different version of Forrest Gump. Uh, it's really funny. And the problem is I read this while driving, which I'm not proud of, but I used to do that all the time. I would read while I drove. Um, which again, you know, kind of those things where you get older and you're like, why'd you do that, man? Why'd you do that? But I did. And I remember I read this on one car ride. I drove my grandma down to New Jersey from Connecticut and dropped her off uh, at my with my aunt. And then on the ride back, I just put this on the steering wheel and I just read it as I drove on the highway back to Connecticut and I finished it on the drive real short. And uh, yeah, probably shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Um, stupid of me, but I was young and I I always need to be doing multiple things at once. And that was, you know, whatever. It's not as stupid. Anyway, but you read it so quick. Like when you read a book in one sitting, you kind of forget it. But I remember this one because it was funny. And it's basically Forrest Gump. It's like uh, this dude is a, <laughs> this dude's a gardener. It's all he knows. He was just kind of like, a, he just crushes TV and gardens. And then, because it's satirical, all the, by happenstance, he keeps getting, he gets introduced to the president and the president's talking about new policies and he asks him, he asks the gardener his thoughts. And they don't know he's just a simpleton gardener. And he, he gives him a quote. I think I... Very famous quote from the book. Uh, but like basically he becomes a political pundit and they put him on TV nonstop and all of his thoughts just stem from television and being a gardener. And he introduces his pe- introduces himself as Chance the Gardener. But they hear it as Chauncey Gardener and they think he's all elite. It's a funny book. It's a funny book. It's like Forrest Gump, kind of like a simpleton, stumbles into a ton of different things. And the famous quote is he says... Uh, in a garden, growth has its season. There are spring and summer, but there are also fall and winter, and then spring and summer again. As long as the roots are not severed, 
all is well and all will be well. That's what he told the president. It didn't really pertain to what the president was saying. He just only knew how to talk about gardening, which is where the comedy comes from. But yeah, I think the cool quote. If you wanted to like put it to times right now, basically like, hey, as long as you don't fuck up too bad, you know, things will go back to normal. Corona, boom. As long as we don't fuck up too bad, we can get back to normal. What's the other saying? This too shall pass. It's basically this too shall pass. A lot of different ways to say that shit. Anyway, also this guy, Polish author, they say he plagiarized this book. And uh, they say he plagiarized his first book too, that he would just take great Polish books and then rewrite them in English in his own way and then sell them. I don't know. I didn't read the Polish book because I can't read Polish, so I can't make up my mind on if this dude plagiarized or not plagiarized. All I know is the book made me laugh. It's really quick. It's from 1970. It's called Being There, and it's kind of got Forrest Gump Gump vibes. And if you want to go check it out, check it out. If you have read it and you want to talk about it, hit me up on the We Made Up Twitter just for this show, Morning by John Boy. Um, There's a couple other Kaczynski books I read. Steps. I don't know. I don't know. Champ Summers. Someone someone in the chat says, I thought you were about to say Champ Summers. Great, great baseball. Great baseball name. Um, all right, I'll go to the chat for a little bit. We got uh we got JJR today, but let's see. Anyone want to chat for a tiny bit before we end this? Can't believe you haven't hit a million subs yet. Oh, thanks, man. Um maybe one day. We'll see. It's been it's been growing nicely, but we're doing different things now, and a lot of people only like the one thing. So I appreciate anyone that checks out the other things and we got other things in the work, but I still, you know, it's hard to do breakdowns. Um, and we never created the company just to do two minute videos. Uh, you know, we want to do a lot more than that, but yeah, thank you. Um, it'd be cool if we hit a million followers, but whatever, we'll get there. Happy to have the audience we have. Um, no, this is for you and not for us. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say that. This is for me, not for you. Damn, I'm so bad at remembering opening spiels. Sometimes you listen to podcasts, right? And they have their opening, like they do the please review, subscribe, like at the start of every show, and they do hi, this is blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, opening spiels. I always forget, man. Even on podcast apps, we we always forget to ask for reviews and ratings, kindly because it's just so annoying. I think we do it like once a month. Um, but that's it. Talking baseball was great. Thanks, Mark Ingringham fan. Which I know your name isn't Mark, but I just call you Mark. Um, any word on when you're getting back to the office? I don't know. I mean, it's if baseball happens, then I think that we will be as cautious as we can to at least get, you know, the Jake and I there so we can record in the studio because we'll be recording a lot more and stuff and stuff like that. So, so then I don't know if it's a full blown, everyone goes to the office. I I don't know how it's going to work. It's so, it's so ridiculous, but hopefully we get there soon. I watched Grant last night, episode two, to be honest, uh, I was, I got, I got too gummied up. So I got to watch it again. But the Vicksburg campaign, amazing. Just just insane. I don't know if you guys... I hope that they put out like... Is there an, is, if there's a, a social media presence for the History Channel documentary Grant, someone should clip just the, the map graphics they have of the battles and the moving waves of blue and versus red and clip how Grant attacked Vicksburg and then went to Jack. It's so cool. It's so cool. And they did such a good job on it. So uh, that's good. That was cool. I've never been to Gettysburg. Uh, I would love to go. I went to Normandy a couple years ago. There's a video on this YouTube channel of that trip back when it was like just a personal YouTube channel and uh, not a whole a whole damn network. So anyway. Um, all right. I think that kind of ends this morning show. Uh Someone asked, do you think you'll keep doing the morning show post-quarantine? I think so, man. 
because this is out on multiple platforms and there's a lot of people that tune in. Uh, so I really appreciate that you guys do that. And if there's an audience, then I'll keep doing it. And I'm, I'm having fun doing it. Like I said, it's for me, not you. I, it's only a matter of, do I wake up and record this here, then go to the office? Or do I wake up early or go to the office, record this at the office, um, then just stay at the office? And right now we only have like one computer. Like I was, took it back and forth and I was just going to have a laptop at home, but that's not going to be able to work anymore. So especially because Katie and I are getting a dog and I'm going to be want to hear, want to be here more. So I don't, I, I would hope to keep doing this. There's people watching and we actually, uh, to your, to your guys's dismay, we are trying to sell ads on top of this so we can actually make money off of it. Um, cause right now it's just kind of a loss. Um, like I said, though, it's for me, but Hey, make money, sell an ad at the beginning, maybe get you guys some discount codes to places that's probably coming. So just expect it. And then, uh, we'll breeze through and then we'll go to this. How do you think the MLB can make baseball season more exciting for 2020? They can have one. They can have one. It's going to be pretty unexciting if, if, uh, there's no baseball. So I think just maybe have it. Have the baseball, have the baseball, not Mr. Moon on Periscope asked thoughts on Jeff Passon's tweet about MLB Oakland players not getting paid. I think I've made my Oakland rant a million times. One of the richest owners, um, and just owns a team, but doesn't put funds into it. And, and, um, has Oakland fans brainwashed, man? They brag about being a small market team and like, yeah, well, we can't go out and sign guys. And it's like, you can. You, your owner's got more money than the Steinbrenners, you know? Um, they just completely have brainwashed the A's fans into thinking that they're a small market team that doesn't have a lot of money. It's, they, may, they charge their own players for Cokes and shit out of the vending machine. Their bullpen sits on... Um, just a plain old metal bench that you could find at an abandoned softball field right now. You know, uh, I, it's, I've done this rant a million times. The o Oakland A's have, their owner has billions of dollars uh, and he has just like gas lamped uh, or gaslighted everyone into thinking that they're a poor franchise and they can't afford things. And it's, it's, so, it's so frustrating. I lived in the Bay Area for nine years. I have a lot of friends that are A's fans and they just accept it. And they just play the woe is me card. Yeah, we don't have money, man. We can't, we, well, we can't hire guys. We can't just get free agents like the Yankees. You can. You can. You just brainwashed. So anyway. Anyway, I got to get going. I'm going to finish my coffee, which came out well today. I didn't make it though. So I made it the other day. I tried to make it too strong. It sucked. This song is, uh, Corey Chisel. Nothing I can do about it now. He landed on the random thing. I said I never meant to love you, but it's too late. Someone uh, asked about Moneyball. Moneyball is a good movie, but it's not a good representation of that A's team. They had the best top end pitching staff, and they had Chavez, and they had studs players, and they won like 300 games over the course of three seasons. And that movie paints them as like a bunch of scrappy underdog, uh, just scratch, scratch it and clawing to win games. Like, no, they were really, really good. Uh, and they just kind of left that out of the story, which is frustrating. So, all right. What kind of creamer? I don't use creamer in my coffee. I just drink it black. Uh, all right. See ya. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know how. Yeah, I never meant to love you, but it's too late now I never took myself for a family man Yeah, now I'm running to the bedroom every chance I can You draw the shades, let your head down, you pull me in Well, I can feel your blood rushing just below your skin I said it'll always be a prisoner, I'll always be.